Central Baptist family. Uh, welcome to another installment of the Lockdown Devotions. We are your interns. My name is Wise Man Kamanga. And I am Carsten Rembold. As you know, we have been covering through 2 Peter. And so we are currently in 2 Peter from verse 1 to verse 16. Mm-hmm. We decided to combine two guys together. Because it's such a long portion of uh, scripture, we decided we're just going to read from verse 1 to verse 3 to really just we feel like that's a good summary of what's happening. If you do want to read the whole scripture, you can pause the video now and then you can come back and, and join us. Uh, I'll just start reading from 2 Peter verse chapter 2, verse 1. But false prophets also rose among the people, just as there will be false prophets among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Mm. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. And their destruction is not asleep. Mm. What is is the first thing that you take out from the reading of this this passage? You know, Karsten, the first thing I see here is verse 1. Peter is giving the church, out to us, the church today, and is giving the people of God back here in his letter a very important warning that false teachers will arise within mm. the church. You know, he quantifies his motive with what happened in the Old Testament, warning the people of God here that false prophets arose among the people of God back then. Mm. And he's saying here, false prophets within the people of God here and how we can apply this. False teachers within the body of Christ today will arise from us. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, that's that's true. And I think even just for me, it stands up. It says false prophets will arise. Mm, yes. There is certainty in that. Peter is not wanting us to doubt, mm. uh, and we can think no, but it's in the other churches. It's like no, we need to be looking within our own body and saying, mm. are there false prophets among us? Mm. My my next question was just. What is this false prophecy? And so mm. taking a look, I looked at verse 2, and it says, And many will follow their sensuality. Right? And so from that sensuality, they're just following their senses, mm. following what they want, how they want to live, what they want to do. We see this idea carried all the way through, uh, even from verse 10, which says, And especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority, bold and willful. Right? They're really just carrying out what their will desires. They're mm-hmm. saying, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to go and do that. Mm. They're really just looking from that perspective. And mm. they say, you know what? Jesus saved me and that's it. I can live how I want to live. Yeah. Right? They're taking what Paul says in Romans, which is that we are free from sin. Yeah. And just going, you know what? That means I'm saved. It's all done. I can live like I want. Yeah. Which essentially is an image of God and saying, you know what? God doesn't care about my morality. Yeah. yeah. But God clearly does care about our morality. He yeah. he clearly cares about the way we live and act. Mm. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's such a, an important warning for the church today. And I think um, when, you, when you read further in verse 1, I love how he puts it here. He says, denying the master who bought them. I think we mm. must remember that these are false teachers or false prophets within the people of God. And the one reason that makes them false is they are denying the master who has bought them. We are mm. bought by the precious blood of of Jesus Christ, and etc. That, that's what we're celebrating. It's the yeah. weekend. You yeah. know? And so these false prophets, that's the warning. False prophets among the people of God, they deny the master. And so, um, yeah, I think, um, h- how can you help us see better how this implies to the, fo- the following verses, the next verses? Yeah, so we see even through this, we're looking at the, the destruction of uh, the world in the flood. Mm. We're looking at Sodom and Gomorrah, which was destroyed. Mm-hmm. And you can see that they just lived the way they lived. Yeah. Right? They want to live like the way they live. And God said, I'm not going to have that. Yeah. Right? Because of the way you're living, because you're turning away from me, because you don't understand that I'm a God who is a moral God. Mm. Right? And, and you see even in there, it's, it's the fact that they're turning, they're denying the master. Mm. Right? And so because they deny the master, the master carries out his justice. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so his justice is carried out through 
him killing these people, yeah. essentially wiping them out from the face of this earth. Yeah. Right? We see that God is a God who is going to carry out justice mm-hmm. and destruction. Yeah. Even we, in the end of verse 3, he says, their condemnation for long ago is not out of, and their destruction is not asleep. It's not asleep. Man, I love that. And, and you know, Peter goes further and then starts to expound on that judgment, mm. that condemnation that will appear. And he, again, he is using Old Testament imagery. Now he's, he's pointing at how God cast down the angels who rebelled. Like he sent them down to hell. And then he uses the image of, of, uh, of Noah and the ark, mm. you know, re- referring to Noah and reminding us how, how did God deal with, pe- with, with, with mankind when their hearts were hard towards him? He flooded the earth. Mm. Um, how did God deal with the city of Sodom and Gomorrah? He destroyed it. So this is the result of false prophets. And I love it when he says in verse 9, where he says, uh, to, he says, Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under mm. punishment until the day of judgment. That second yeah. part, to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, mm. that is God's condemnation towards those who are false, who are teaching false things, whose attitudes are to deny him who has brought them. But, I think you can see in verse 9, the first part of verse 9, the Lord knows how to rescue the godly. Mm. I mean, I think yeah. we have to remember again, Peter is warning us here of false prophets that are in the body. This affects the body. So there's a response to those who are false prophets in the body. And there's a response to those who are righteous in the body. And that's such a great hope, isn't it, Carsten? Yeah. We have hope in in this. Yeah, I think think it's so key to say that God doesn't just punish the unjust. He Mm. rewards the just. Yeah. Right? We can look at that. And I read this text and I just see such harsh language. Mm. We really see... That, that in verse 14, they have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin, mm. enticed, unsteady souls, right? So, such, like verse 12 says, but these like irrational animals, mm. right? Really harsh language that comes yeah. through. And to me, that really speaks about, whoa, this is something I need to be watching out for. Yeah. This is something that we really need to be looking at. Mm. Yes, within our church body, mm. but I think even just in my own life, I'm saying, is there that temptation that I can be following these insatiable sins? Yeah. yeah. That, that I could just be saying, you know what? I know Jesus died for me. And, and mm. yes, there's that price. And, and we even, you're oh, such an amazing servant, Pastor Charles coming through and just realizing the weight of sin. Yeah. But, but really reminding ourselves in the context of chapter one mm. that we're looking at to secure our salvation. Yes. Right. And so I need to remember that God is a moral God and I need to try and ensure that I'm following that yes. to, to yeah. make sure that I continually pursue God because God is going to protect those who are righteous. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree, Carsten. And I think, you know, when you see verse 14, that is such a great lens for me to actually in, investigate, or even just to search my own heart and, and then see, okay, in what way can I be denying the master? It's a warning for me to, mm. to, to check my own teaching, my own doctrine. Verse 14 says, they have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin, enticed by they they entice and steady souls they have hearts trained in greed yeah? and, and he yeah. uses an example of an old testament false prophets Balaam. i mean like this is great for yeah. us to actually search our hearts we look at we look at chapter one and we see how is god called us to live how is god called us to live out our salvation and we can and then we can come to chapter two and say okay how can we search our own attitude and, and, and realize okay this is what God is warning us of. There, there are false prophets within the church. This is their posture. They're denying God. Am I denying God? We can apply that today. Search your own hearts and see, okay, in what way has my heart gone astray? And this is such great news. Those who are righteous are kept. Not by ourselves. Yeah. By who? By God. You know, verse 9 is such an encouragement for me. The Lord knows how to rescue the godly. That is such a pertinent help for us. Yeah, definitely a good hope. I think just to wrap it up and summarize, it really says, are we living for God or are we living for ourselves? Mm. Amen.